Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Becca, and today I have my Becca's Book Off-Lathon TBR. So if this is the first Bookopoly TBR that you guys are ever seeing, I play a game called Becca's Bookopoly every single month to pick my TBR. However, this month is a little bit special because I am hosting my first month-long round of Becca's Bookopolathon, which is a readathon based on my monthly TBR game. So for one month only, I am using the Bookopolathon challenge board, which is the same board that you guys are all using. And if you don't know what the Bookopolathon is and you would like to take part, then I will link the announcement video up here for you guys where you'll get all of the rules, every Everything you need to know and a full tour of the board. So in the month of September I do have quite a bit going on. It's not actually too much, it's just the books that I need to read in September are a little bit chunky. So I do need to read two group books for read-along that I'm doing. One is for my read-along catch-up book club and the second is for the Stormlight read-along that starts in September. Aside from that I have amassed quite a few arcs over the last couple of months that have September and October release dates. So I would like to get some of those into this TBR as well. Fingers crossed the book works out well for me because I do have a hefty stack of compulsory reading this month. It, it's all going to be a little bit chaotic but I hope we can make it work. Before we get started as well I would just like to thank everybody who is participating in the Bookopolathon. I've been watching a whole bunch of TBRs. I've been watching Bookopoly ruin your lives like it always ruins mine. I'm really excited for the readathon to get started and I have quite a few things in store for you guys over the month that I hope you're going to really enjoy. But without further ado, before we get into to our first roll of Becca's Bookopolathon. Let's just take a look at last month's books and see whether I read them all. So here are the books that were on my August TBR. This is quite a hefty stack but surprisingly page count it wasn't too much. That being said I still failed. So we had Infinity Sun that was my punishment book for not finishing my July TBR. Girls of Storm and Shadow by Natasha Nyan which was a young adult fantasy. Dead as a Doornail by Charlene Harris which was a paranormal. Assassin's Quest by Robin Hobb which was an adult fantasy. Vengeful by V. Schwab which was a friend pick. Three Fifths by John Vircher which was a book inspired by the past. Bone Cryer's Moon by Catherine Purdy which was a subscription box book and Ruthless Gods by Emily A. Duncan which was another young adult fantasy. So of this stack of eight books I managed to complete five. I'm currently reading Girls of Storm and Shadow and I will have that finished by the end of the month because I still have a couple of days left and I'm around halfway through. However I did not make a start on Dead as a Doornail and I did not make a start on Ruthless Gods which means it's time for a punishment, which I really don't need this month. So here is my little pot of punishments. This contains 12 bad prompts. They do all seem bad on paper, but there are definitely some in here that I would rather pull over others. There is one especially in here that I really, really do not want to pull this month. I mean, there's multiple that I'd rather not pull, but there's one that I would really, really be upset if I pulled it. But yeah, let's, let's do this. I'm scared. <laughs> We have, we have the one. I'm scared. <gasps> Over 500 pages. Yes, okay. So I actually really, really wanted this one this month. This is the one, if I could have picked any of them, that I would have actually chosen to pick. I'm really happy about this. Okay, so I just took a minute because I had serious decision making to do here. And before I show you what book I'm putting on for my punishment book, when I am moaning and panicking in the middle of the month, please remind me that I have done this to myself because I'm making a decision right now that I know that I'm probably gonna regret because the book that I'm going to use for my punishment, which is a book over 500 pages, is Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. So as I mentioned, I am doing the Stormlight read-along starting in September, and I have had so many comments on that video saying that people strongly recommend that I read Warbreaker first, but nobody will tell me why, because I imagine spoilers. And I was really torn about whether to do this because I know the Cosmere reading order is recommended but not necessary because all of the series are on their own. But I am one of those people who does like to read things in the order they're supposed to be read. Perfect example, Robin Hobb's Realm of the Eldlings, which I'm reading from start to finish, all 15 books. So we're going with Warbreaker, which is 650 pages of adult epic fantasy. As with most Brandon Sanderson, I don't know too much about this. I believe that it's currently a standalone but there is going to be at least one more book that follows it in the Warbreaker series and this follows two princesses. One of them is destined to marry the God King 
thing. There is also a lesser god and an immortal who is trying to undo the mistakes that he made hundreds of years ago and the magic system in this one surrounds colour. That's all I know about this and it is the first book going on my bookopolis on TBR. This was a birthday gift from Michelle from Books Michelle so thank you so much to Michelle for gifting this to me. So now we've got that out of the way let us go into roll number one. Okay so this time as we are using the bookopolis on challenge board for one month only we will be starting on go. Wish me luck guys. First roll. A double six. an ebook or an audiobook. So we're kicking this off with a double. So we have a really chunky book going on my TBR straight off and then our first roll is a double. So this time we landed on ebook or audiobook and for this we're going with our second chunky adult epic fantasy of the TBR and that is The Ship of Magic by Robin Hobb. I believe that this one is 880 pages. I do not currently own a physical copy. I have an ebook bind up of the entire trilogy. This is the August and September book for my book club which is Catch Up Book Club and as I just mentioned we're reading the entirety of The Realm of the Elderlings. This is the first book in the Life Ship Traders. It is the first trilogy in The Realm of the Elderlings that doesn't follow Fitz and it surrounds these ships that are made of something called wizard wood. I believe if you have at least two, two or three generations of a family die on a ship that's made out of wizard wood, the ship will come to life and it becomes one of these live ships. That is all I know about this. I'm already committed to reading it because of my book club so I haven't looked too much into to it. So a lot of you guys have told me that you really love the Live Ship Traders trilogy and I've really been enjoying Robin Hobb so I'm sure I will too. Roll number two, if we could ease off the doubles that would be fab. A double two. A middle grade. As if things couldn't get any worse we have our second double. <laughs> only the second roll and we already have two doubles. This one landed on middle grade so at least it should be a quicker easier read and for this one I'm going to be reading When Life Gives You Mangoes by Kareem Getton. This is an arc I received from Pushkin Press so thank you so much to Pushkin for sending this my way. The release date for this is the 4th of October and this follows a girl who lives on a remote island. She is having trouble remembering something that happened a summer ago. She has a best friend called Gaina however they have been growing distant and and I believe that this book surrounds a visitor from England that Clara makes friends with and this is somehow connected to the summer that she can't remember. This thankfully is a nice short read, it's only 200 pages so shouldn't take me too long. I'm hoping to balance the chunky books with shorter reads this month. It's not normally my thing, just middle grade in general, I don't read a whole lot of but I've heard that this is super cute and the cover is stunning. Roll number three, six. A chance card. Angel after the fall. So we didn't get a double for roll number three, however, we did get a chance card. The chance cards that I've put on the Bookopolis on board are specifically for this month. So we have a mix of books that I kind of have to read, some of which I don't really want to, and some shorter reads to make my life a little bit easier. And one of those shorter reads did come up, so I will be reading Angel After the Fall, Volume 1 by Joss Whedon. I think it's Scott Lynch, although it doesn't have his first name on the cover. So some of you guys may know I am a huge fan of the Buffy. Verse. I have just completed a rewatch of all of Buffy and all of Angel. I've watched Buffy many many times before and I've also watched Angel all the way through a couple of times. However this is the first time I will be reading the comics. Now these are canon. So Angel After the Fall starts off directly as the last episode of Angel ends which if you guys have seen Angel you will know that it ends on an enormous cliffhanger because they were cancelled before they planned to actually end the show. So it doesn't quite wrap up as tidily as you would expect from Josh. Sweden. Can't lie, don't really love the art style in here but I do really want to know what happens to the characters of Angel specifically because of the massive cliffhanger at the end of the show and since I finished my rewatch a couple of weeks ago I've been desperate to pick this up and I'm glad that I finally can. And this was a birthday gift from Claire so thank you so much to Claire for gifting this to me. Roll number four. Nine. 
a book set in the past. So rule number four was to read a book set in the past and this is the prompt that I asked my Patreons to pick for me. Every month I select four books for one of the prompts on my Bookopoly TBR and ask my Patreons to vote on which one I should read. Now this one was very very hard for me to select books for because I don't like historical fiction so I had a limited amount of books that I could have chosen. None of them are actually historical fiction because like I said I don't like it. But the first one was Mary Poppins Comes Back by P.L. Travers. This is the second book in the Mary Poppins series. The second one was My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix which is a horror set in the 80s. The next one was Romanov by Nadine Brands which may or may not take place in the past. However it is a fantasy retelling of Anastasia Romanov who is a historical figure. And the final option was Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid which is a biographical style novel that follows this band. I think it starts off in the 60s or 70s and goes all the way up to present day and is about this fictional band called Daisy Jones and the Six. Surprisingly, not too surprisingly though, the winner of the poll was My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. I actually thought that Daisy Jones and the Six was going to win and I wouldn't have been mad about it because I've heard that the audiobook is excellent and I could do with an audiobook this month but My Best Friend's Exorcism won which is still fine because it's a book that I've been meaning to read for a very long time. So I don't actually know too much about this aside from that it is a horror set in the 80s and it follows a girl whose best friend has been possessed and they're performing an exorcism I imagine. This was a gift from Gavin last year I think did he send me this? Oh because I posted my 300th YouTube video so he sent me a book to congratulate me for that. I think I'm on like video 520 something now so that is how long ago he sent me this book but thank you so much Gavin I'm very excited to finally read this one. Roll number five seven my most recent purchase. Next up we had most recent purchase which is a prompt that I always like to land on and this time it was especially fortuitous because the last book order that I placed was from Waterstones and it contained a whole ton of Brandon Sanderson books. For this prompt I'm going to be reading The Way of Kings part one because in the UK the paperbacks are split into two smaller sections which I love because it definitely makes them more manageable even though there isn't like a natural break in the middle because the rest of the book just continues in part two it makes them seem less intimidating because instead of a 1000 page book I have a 600 and a 500 ish page book to read. So this is the first book in the Stormlight Archive. It's the book that we will be reading in September for the Stormlight read along. I do not know too much about this but I've heard that it's Brandon Sanderson's best work. Everybody loves it. Literally I know a little bit about most of Brandon Sanderson's series. But I know absolutely nothing about The Way of Kings aside from that there's a character in here called Kaladin who everybody loves and I have just recently found out that he's a tortured hero which is a character type that I really really like. Roll number six. Eight. A dark cover. For roll number six we landed on a book with a dark cover and for this one I'm going to be reading Twisted Fate by Jesse Elliott. This is a review copy that has been sent to me by the author. I don't really know too much about this. I accepted it because I'm already familiar with Jesse Elliott's work. She co-wrote the Charlie Travesty series with KJ Sutton and this is a fae romance and fae romance is all I ever really need to know to be honest. You guys know I love it. So I'm very excited to get to this one in the month. And what will hopefully be our last roll is not our last roll because it is a double four. A book with LGBTQ plus rep. What I thought would be my final role for the Bacoplathon was of course not my final role because it never works out like that does it? And you know it's fine. Everything's <laughs> gonna be fine. We're gonna be fine. I'm not panicking at all. It's all good. So this time we landed on LGBTQIA plus rep and for this one I'm going to be reading The Mermaid, The Witch and the Sea. This is an arc that was sent to me by Walker Books so thank you so much to Walker for sending this my way. I do believe it is already released in the US but the UK publication date on this is the 3rd of September. I'm not sure where I put the press release for this book but I'm pretty sure it says that it does deal with gender identity and possibly some more LGBT 
LGBTQIA plus rep in here as well. This book takes place aboard a pirate ship called the Dove and we follow a pirate called Florian who was born Flora. Despite their very different stations, Florian starts to grow closer to a highborn lady who is seeking passage on the ship on her way to an arranged marriage that she doesn't want and together they hatch a plan to free a mermaid. I'm really intrigued about this one. The plot sounds great. The cover is absolutely stunning and I think, I hope, fingers crossed, this is going to be one that I really enjoy. Again, hopefully our last roll, roll number eight. Adults. And finally, the final role on my Wikoplathon TBR is to read an adult book. So of course, I'm not going to talk too much about this one, but I'm going to be reading The Way of Kings Part 2 by Brandon Sanderson. This is why I love that these editions are split into two because I can use them to fulfill two prompts because technically these are two separate physical books. Like it's it's great, I love it. So they are all the books on my book on TBR. I'm just gonna scoop them all up so I can show you guys the stack because um, I think it's gonna be a little bit intense. So these are all the books that I own physically <laughs> that are on my TBR and to be honest, this stack doesn't look so bad but we do have an 880 page book or what would be that would be on here as well. And also I think Twisted Fate is 200 80 pages. Now the good news is that even though I have four chunky, chunky books on this TBR, the rest of the books are quite small. The only other book on my TBR over 400 pages is The Mermaid, The Witch and the Sea. This is 200. This is 144. This one is 300 and something. So I think I've managed to balance it out okay. My total page count for the month is around 3,900 pages and I have to read 130 pages per day to complete it. So all of that is completely doable. However, seeing as this is the second month I've had to take a punishment option, whether I actually do do it is a whole different matter. So that is it for my book off on TBR. Please, please wish me luck. I've done this to myself. I could have made this a lot easier for myself, but I didn't do that, did I? So I have nobody else to blame for this enormous TBR, but it's going to be fine. I'm feeling determined. I've been really, really wanting to read some adult epic fantasy recently, so I've got my wish. There's plenty on here for me to get through. Please let me know down in the comments how the Bokoplathon board has treated you in September. Was she kind? Was she evil? Mine was definitely a little bit evil this month and I'm a little bit salty about it. But aside from that, thank you so much once again to everybody who has participated in the Bokoplathon. And of course, as always, an enormous thank you to my patrons for picking a book for me and all of the other wonderful things that you guys do. But that is about it from me today, guys. So please don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you want to. If you head to my description box, you'll find a link to my good reads Instagram and Twitter if you'd like to follow me on any of those as well as a link to my bookish body butter and candle website the Instagram for that and a 10% off discount code but that's it from me today guys bye oh you bite your friend like chocolate you say you will go where nobody knows with guns in under our petticoats we're never gonna quit it no we're never gonna quit it no